Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm going to show you today how you can potentially save about $1,500 a year. I want to bring back the baking day, <laughs> the good old fashioned baking day. And I thought for a start, I would set myself a challenge and see how much I could bake in a day and work out all the ingredients, how much it will cost me to make and then work out how much it would be to buy the equivalent. I didn't do exactly what I set out to do in that I didn't spend the entire day baking. I did most of it during the period where the kids were at school, um, mainly because I was, I was tired by the time they got back from school. I went from about nine o'clock to two o'clock and then I had to tap out, I was just shattered. But I made a lot of stuff. I made easily enough stuff to last us the week. I may have to make another, another couple of loaves of bread or something. But as far as lunchbox fillers goes, that, that's us set now. And a lot of those can be frozen too. That was actually really neat. And I thought I would also try that because a lot of people watch my videos and they say, oh, I wish I had the time to do what you do. I thought, well, yeah, I can, I can, I hear you and I can totally understand. I did do a stint working part time and I can tell you right now, I did not come home and say, I'm gonna make a loaf of bread now. People in general are a bit more time poor, I guess, than what we used to be. But it doesn't take that long. If you've got a day off, even if you just put aside an hour or two to do some baking, especially if you get the kids involved. Okay, it's gonna be slower with kids involved, it always is. But they will love that, especially if there's yummy stuff coming from it. And you could save a lot of money, even if you just start small, because the more you do it as well, I mean, the way I really got into my baking was I just figured out how to make one thing. And then I, I kept on making that one thing every week, and then I added more things. And now it's at the point where I don't usually have a big baking day as such, but I do something every day. If we need more bread, I'll make a couple of loaves of bread. Next day I might make some muffins or some crackers or, you know, it's just, that's what works best for me. But I mean, to make a batch of muffins, if you've got a simple recipe, it can take less than 10 minutes just to put all the ingredients together and the oven does the rest. So it's not as time consuming as you might think. Often the act of making something is not as hard as the thought of making it, if that makes sense. Sometimes I think, oh, wraps for dinner, that'd be really nice, and then, oh, can I be bothered making wraps? But then if I actually start doing it, it's, well, it's actually not that hard. The thought of doing it is harder than the act of doing it. And of course, I can understand with time restraints, on reflection, how, you know, the good old baking day kind of got phased out over time. Pre-prepared snacks became the norm. Um, you know, all individually mass produced, wrapped in plastic. Of course, one of the great things about baking your own things is you know exactly what has gone into them. You know exactly how much sugar you're putting in. You can choose to increase or decrease the levels. Um, and also you've got options when it comes to packaging. You know, you don't have to buy all the pre-packaged stuff. You can pack it in whatever you want to pack it in. Often that you can just put them in a container and you don't even need the plastic. But just the cost these days of mortgages and rents and the cost of living, it's just going up and up and up and wages don't always go up to reflect that. So that's why I think we do, a lot of people are going back to home baking and those that aren't, I think it's a really good idea to give it a go because we see a swing back you know, our food cost is going to come down again. One thing I actually do to, partially because it's recipes I make often. Funny story, I actually refer back to my own videos to remember how to make stuff. <laughs> I used to have all my recipes written down and I'd actually just like slot them into a recipe book. I've got the um, Edmunds cookbook. I'd highly recommend getting the Edmunds cookbook for anyone who's just starting out. But, um, because they're pretty foolproof recipes, they're really good. Yeah, I used to write down all my recipes and just slot them into the appropriate sections in the cookbook. <laughs> but as I've been making these videos, of course, I've been making stuff and now I actually refer back to my own. <laughs> I scroll down into the description of my own video to remind myself how to make stuff because I've got a memory like a sieve. 
um, if I don't have something written down. And some of my recipes, especially the ones I make often, like um, crumpets, bread, crackers, wraps, I've actually got them written down on a piece of paper stuck to the inside of my pantry. And I think that's that's quite a good idea because it's just an easy reference. You don't have to bother looking anything up, looking through a book, whatever. If it's something that you make, and yeah, just nobody sees it in there. You might see it on some of my videos, I don't know. But yeah, the inside of my pantry, I've got a piece of paper stuck there that's got some of my regular, just the ingredients, just to remind myself. Because <laughs> otherwise I get, them, I get them mixed up. So, you know, that's, that's just a little tip you can do as well, you know, just have a few recipes written down somewhere, stick them on the inside of your pantry, and they're right there, and you can easily see if you've got everything you need or whatever. I would really like to issue this challenge to people to have a baking day once a week, even if it's not a whole day, a baking half day, or a baking couple of hours. See what you can make. And what I would really like is if you could report back to me, even either put something in the comments below, let me know what you made, even if it was just a batch of muffins, one loaf of bread, you know, some wraps, just give it a go, because that's how you start. Just give one thing a go, even just once a week. Or better still, head over to the Cheap Ways NZ Facebook page, take a picture of your baking day, show me what you made, and um, yeah, stick the picture stick the picture on the Facebook group and uh, yeah, show us what you made because it's it inspires other people to give things a go as well. The more, and it does for me, I know I've actually gotten a few inspirational ideas for videos and stuff from people in the Facebook group who've shared their things and I'm like, hey, how'd you make that? I wanna make that. And so, so it's good, you can, there, there can be a lot of to and fro, you can really inspire people. And bonus points if you figure out how much it cost, how much the ingredients cost, because um, that's actually not so bad. Once you get the hang of it, once you, you know, you look, look at the product, how much does this cost, you work out how much it costs per gram, how many grams went into the recipe, so that, that's just bonus points. I don't know how you spend the points, by the way, just, you just get points street cred. That's what you get. You get cheaper ways in Z street cred. <laughs> so anyway, this this is what I ended up making at the end of the day. I made a chocolate wheat bix slice, so, which is cut into nine pieces, 14 muesli bars, one loaf of bread, eight ham and cheese knot rolls, 33 crumpets, a batch of crackers, don't ask me how many, I did not count them, and several got eaten during the course of the day. <laughs> um, 12 three ingredient bickies, which I added raisins to, so I guess that's four ingredients. A litre of Greek yoghurt, and 12 banana muffins. I think that's a pretty good effort. I even went through, I went to great pains to work out all the ingredients I used to make all of those. I'm not working out the price individually, that's just going next level, okay? But <laughs> the price altogether of all the ingredients I used to make all of that came to $17.89. So that's the price of making all of those. Now, what I did was I went on to I was, I was trying to figure out how to compare it to store-bought. So what I did was I went to Pack and Save online and I checked the price of comparable items. Now when I say comparable, I mean like I looked up the cheapest muesli bars you can get. So like the, I think you can get a packet of Pam's muesli bars for $1.98. They are much smaller than the muesli bars I make. In my humble opinion, they're not as nice. Um, the same with the bread, I compared, if you look at that nice big lovely homemade loaf of bread I got, I compared that to the cheapest loaf of bread I could find. On the Pack and Save website, or comparable items, the cheapest items you can buy, it comes to $46.82 to buy all of that. So of course, me and my calculator got busy. And <laughs> now that would save you, if you made those particular items, once a week, every week, to feed your family, that would be a $28.93 saving every week. Over a year, $1,504.36. Not only is it cheaper to make your own stuff, but it's so much nicer. 
and even though I bake quite often, I felt so proud yesterday, seriously, when I, when I put everything out on the counter. I almost didn't want to start putting things away in the pantry and the freezer and everything. I just wanted to sit there and admire it because it looked so beautiful. I felt so proud looking at all of that that, you know, I've just gone and made all that in a day. Just give it a go, people. Hit like. As I say, leave me a comment. Hit subscribe. And bring back Baking Day. <laughs> Bye.